Hello and welcome to another to C-sharp tutorial and in this tutorial I'm actually going to uh, use something called the magnifier and I'm going to zoom in. Uh, this is because people with uh, not the best internet can watch these videos without any problems. Okay, so today we're going to be learning about if statements, relational operators and logical operators. Okay, I've already typed up some code here from uh, previous recordings, so I'm just going to explain what it is. Okay, I made an integer number equals zero. Okay, nothing special, but you've never seen this before, have you? This is called an if structure. Okay, to make this, all I did was type in if. I put in two parentheses and I put two curly braces like that. So what this basically means is it's basically saying if something in the uh, parentheses is true, then it's going to do something in the curly braces. So, this is basically saying if the number is zero, if the number is zero, then, then it's going to do everything in here. Then do this. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Okay, there's more. You might be wondering why we're using two equal signs. That's because one equal sign is an assignment operator. That means it's going to assign the number variable zero. If you have two of them, that is a relationship, relational operator. Um, that means it's checking to see if number is equal to zero. And if it is, it returns true. Okay, so that's what that is. There's many more. There's does not equal. There is smaller, less than or equal to. There is greater than or equal to. There is greater than. There is less than. I think you get the idea. It's not that complicated at all. I'm just going to erase these. And I'm going to run this program to just show you what it does. See, it says the number is equal to zero. Okay? And that's because it wrote whatever it was in here. It says the number is equal to zero. If we change this number to something like three, run it, it won't say that anymore. Okay? Uh, if we change this to if number does not equal zero and we set it to three, three does not equal zero. So let's see what happens. Uh, actually, it was, we should change the text, but the number is not equal to zero. See if the number is not equal to zero, like we put here. So we could do this. If the number is smaller or equal to zero. You know what we could do? We could get user input. You know what? Let's do this. Number equals convert dot two int 32. Remember from our last tutorial getting user input? This is why it's useful. Console dot uh, read line. Okay. And now we can enter any number. So it's going to say uh, number is smaller or equal to zero. So basically, if you type in a number that is zero or a negative number, it's going to say that. So let's type in a negative number, negative five. Negative five is smaller or equal to zero. Okay, that makes sense, right? But if we type in something like nine, it's not going to do that. If we type in zero, it's still going to do it because it equals it, right? And if we change this to get rid of this equal sign, it's just and just say number if number is smaller than zero. Let's see what happens. I type in zero. Nope, doesn't work. I type in a negative number. Yep, works. Great. Type in a positive number. Doesn't work. Good. Okay. So that's basically what an if statement is and uh, what relational operators do. And there's another things, uh, another thing called logical operators. This basically ties in a bunch of uh, if statements together, basically. So if we have, make another variable called number two, and we, we actually don't have to initialize this. And let's actually make this a little bit neater. Say console dot write line enter to 
numbers. Okay, and then we have number equals number two equals convert dot to int uh, int thirty two console dot line and what this will basically do is we have another number that has a uh, stored number in it and what we can do is we can say if number is greater than five number two is greater than five so this what this is basically saying is if the number is smaller than zero and the number two is greater than five it's going to do this okay what i just put right here the double ampersand sign is a logical operator there are many different types of logical operators uh, the first one being the double ampersand side the next one being two straight lines these are not l's or anything or i's these are straight lines okay they should be right above your enter key on most keyboards okay that's or so ampersand equals and this equals or okay there's another logical operator just an exclamation mark this means not so uh, those are the main logical operators I'll show you what they do in a second so the first number has to be smaller than zero and the second number has to be greater than five so this is smaller than this is smaller than zero and number Two is let's go over here is greater than five. Okay. Enter two numbers. Our first number has to be less than zero, so we're gonna enter negative forty-three. Okay. Our second number has to be greater than five, so I type in nine. Okay. Good. It worked. Negative forty-three is smaller than zero, and nine is greater than five. Great. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to enter something that will not cause it to to do what we want. So, type in a negative number like normal, 45. Now, I'm going to type in a number smaller than 5. It's not going to work. So that's what the ampersand side does. The or makes any of these happen. So if either of these are true, then it's going to run this if statement. Okay? So enter 8 that's obviously not greater than 0 but if I enter 6 which is greater than 5 it's still gonna work okay and vice versa I'm not gonna spend too much time more time on this because uh, most of these are pretty self-evident and uh, I'm just gonna show you the last one real quick actually we have to put these in uh, parentheses so if this whole expression is not true then it's going to run. So this ampersand percent sign is like the opposite of whatever, whatever it's touching, basically. So it's touching this. So if this is outputs false, it's going to make it a true. If it's a true, then it's going to make it a false. So, let, so let's go ahead and test this. Uh, I'm going to enter in a number greater than zero. All right, I have to enter another number. You see, uh, and it works. So great. So that's basically what uh, logical operator and relational operators do. I'm going to show you one last thing real quick, and that is a new data type. Okay, uh, I'm going to get rid of this. It's called a boolean. Bool for short, that's how we declare it. We're going to say bool uh, can, can, can run. Okay, and we're going to set this to false. Boolean is pretty much the smallest uh, data type. Basically, it takes up the least amount of memory because it's either basically a zero or a one, a true or a false. So what this is doing, here, I'm just gonna make this. Yay, I ran, okay. What this is doing is declaring a boolean we're setting it equal to false and it's saying if can run which basically is the equivalent of saying if can run is equal to false 
okay? Or, I mean, sorry, equal to true. So we could do it either way, but with Booleans, we can just put them blank. We can just say if can run because they are uh, true and false themselves. So if false, basically, that's what we're saying. It's not going to run, right? So yeah, it's not going to run. If we set this to true, however, it's going to run. Yay, I ran. Okay, so that's what Booleans are. You can assign expressions to it. For example, just like if statement and expressions like it can run equals if four is greater than two. Okay? Actually, we're just going to get rid of this. And four is greater than two. So that's going to return true. Okay? Uh, and it did. So what this basically did was make uh, a logical expression and assign it to the boolean can run and then we check if can run is true and if it is we're gonna run this very simple and we can also use logical operators in here as well okay so that's what booleans are that's what logical operators relational operators and if statements are they basically do all the decision making for you in uh, C sharp and they're very powerful so make sure you know this, screw around with it, practice, and uh, leave a like rating, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.